we are now on step seven. Um, now we've already done this bit and this bit and the wings are painted up. I did that at the same time as we painted the uh, bottom wings. We'll take you through that process in a moment, but here they are. Um, so the next thing we have to do is set the wings and to do that we've got to put all those in place and to do that we've got to get all the parts out and clean them up um, and I've got to come up with a system of making sure that I don't get them in the wrong order um, so cleaning up of all the struts is my next job but before you see that you need to see these upper wings coming together so let's do that okay I've got my parts all laid out so these all get painted in the uh, very pale grey well, white for, for all intents and purposes um, and they're in the order they do so the way I'm basically gonna work it is I'm gonna clean them up one at a time put them in their places so that's in the same order as in the instructions so front and back front and back front and back front and back uh, there's also a little loop thing here um, which I'm sure we'll be using when we do the rigging that has to go in as well um, easy to miss it's just there on the instructions um, so yeah so my intention is to clean them all up then test fit them in the wing base that we did in the last video um, and then when we've done that we can then um, look at painting them uh, and I'll, I'll just try and keep them in this order um, there are some s subtle differences you'll see the ones in the middle are much longer than the ones on the end and that's because there is a, a, a fair bit of uh, drop in the depth of the the wing towards the end and someone's actually commented on it on a video and says it it doesn't look as harsh as on you on your bottom wing and you're right it doesn't but it's clearly there and when we meet them up I'm sure it'll be fine um, so all the geometry is going to work out I'm, I'm sure of it but this is the bit of the build that I am most concerned about it's always tricky lining these things up um, so uh, yeah uh, and then it suggests you turn the whole construction upside down to to let it dry now before we can do that we're going to have to put our eye loops in for the rigging so my intention is to do what they've done there test fit it all then test fit everything into the uh, upper wing then drill the holes and add the eye loops for the upper wing then get those all painted glue um, put them loose into the bottom then glue them into the top turn it upside down and um, and then glue it into the the bottom while it's upside down so hopefully um, that should all all come together um, so uh, and we'll be using um, ultra thin CA glue for, for that task, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I'm hoping that the fit is nice and tight on this and it's not going to give me much problems. If the fit is nice and tight, we might get away with um, using extra thin maybe. Um, so that's the plan. Next thing is clean up the parts.
cleaned up all these wing struts um, uh, it took quite, quite a bit of time it's a good couple of hours work just cleaning them up making sure they were as perfect as possible um, and I've test fitted them and, and on the lower wing you've got half moon fittings and square fittings and then on the upper wing they're all circles which is actually going to make it really easy to fit that so I've test fitted it on both the both uh, the bottom and the top uh, wings just to make sure everything is okay um, and what we're starting to do now is to rig the wing so if I just bring this up to the camera a little bit you'll be able to see there that we've got the rigging cables on and attached so I will show you in a sec how I'm doing that it's the same process as before but I'll just show you and the idea is to have all of this bottom section rigged so that um, when we turn this upside down and I'll just make sure I've got this nice and tight yeah when we turn this upside down um, all of these will be able to hang down and that'll make it easier for me to thread them on the bottom that's that's sort of the plan you can see they're all hanging down there so yeah so I have completed the rigging of the lower wing and um, what we've done is we've um, rigged them up and then afterwards we've gone around with a sharpie pen and just coloured all of the rigging lines in with the sharpie pen um, and the reason uh, to do that afterwards once you've put the rigging guys in and um, got everything set as you want is that to colour them with a sharpie pen you need to tug on the cable a little bit and you need to put it under pressure a little bit and that checks that you have secured the lines in properly because what you don't want is when you're coming to tighten these up when you've got the uh, top section of the wing on and you're threading them through the loops there and pulling them taut and gluing them in place what you don't want is the anchor points coming out so uh, it's just a good way of checking that everything is now uh, anchored securely. Now we do have some rigging to put on across the wing at the back here um, but before we can do that I need to paint those in in the um, white grey which is a terrible colour um, it, it's not behaving nicely at all this paint um, and then when I've done that what I want to do is just um, all the uh, white areas need a satin varnish just to seal them in and then we can give everything a little wash um, we're going to use um, a very pale grey for, for washing the white then we are ready to uh, put the last bit of rigging on um, and then we can have a look at adding the, the stanchions so that's the bit I'm dreading that's always the difficult bit because you've got to line them up and you've got to glue them in place and so on um, so what we'll do is we'll put them in loose um, and then a, 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 um, with some slow setting glue in uh, and hopefully we can get them all lined up before the glue sets is the plan um, so with that in mind um, first thing I need to do is paint these little points in so let's do that So I'm just carefully detail painting this in because we have two rigging lines that needs to pass through the eye of this at the top. Now we'll let that dry for a sec. It will need a second coat. Um, but that doesn't prevent me from getting underway with the satin varnish. Um, now I'm using uh, ICM satin varnish because I find it brush paints really, really well. Um, so what we're going to do is make sure we've moved any rigging lines well away 
from where we want to paint. So we put some into this palette here. That'll do to start with. Um, and then we can thin it out with some just ordinary tap water. So that's about 50%, which should be plenty for what we want to do. And then we're just going to try and do it one panel at a time, I think is the best way. So what I find is you put it on and then work it to make sure you get no um, brush strokes. So you get the general idea, I'm going to crack on with this and we'll come back to you when it's done. So we have our wings upside down um, and they're held together just with tape at the moment so what I need to do is glue them in place. Now you can't see this particularly well so we'll try and improve the angle or put two cameras on in a sec but what we're going to do is the, the supports have been glued into this lower wing which is now the top so gravity is holding everything in place with the help of a bit of tape so what we're going to do is run some um, extra thin into the joints there very carefully um, and let them uh, set and dry while the tape's still on. Then we can remove the tape as we put drill in the location points 
Um, then we can slowly remove the tape as we glue in the rigging guys um, and then we're ready to rig which is exciting isn't it so um, yeah looking really good so let's get on let me see if we can find a better angle or two cameras or something okay hopefully you've got a reasonable view of this now so extra thin we're going to start by putting it into these end ones and then we'll move slowly towards the center of the aircraft oh, that was more than I wanted really I always touch it up if we dissolve a little bit of paint. I'm not too worried about that. Yeah. I'll leave that alone for a sec. So that's the first two spars in. Okay, just make sure we've got all our rigging lines out of the way. That's easier. Okay, so that's everything glued in. Well, three mornings of work and we are finally done with rigging the wings. So all the rigging lines are on. Uh, looks really quite cool. I'm pleased with it. It's not been without some difficulties. Um, eyes coming out and bits and pieces, but it is all there and done um, so the remaining rigging is to attach to the fuselage so i'm glad that's out of the way feels like we can move on a little bit now
Test fitting the, the two parts that make up the float, the, the single piece base, and then we've got a, a top that goes on top. Um, and the fit is absolutely lovely, it's perfect. There is, again, this, this strange texturing which um, you've got in some areas but not in others, so I'm going to have to gently sand that smoother before we do anything paint-wise on it. Um, no filling particularly, uh, but there is, um, on one side of both of them, there is this uh, sink here just behind the uh, rib there so got a little bit of uh, filler to put in um, but and they're massive and these are absolutely huge when you consider they're just floats you know, look it is just massive so um So we now move to our floats uh, and they're basically a two part. You've got a bottom section and a top section, as simple as that. Fit is lovely. Um, I've given them a, a quick go over with just a dusting of, of primer um, ready for painting. So we are on step eight now of how many steps have we got left? Another two, step 10 is our final step so it feels like we're getting close but we've got a way to go yet unfortunately because we've got um some small bits to do as well so um I, floats are built up next thing is to build up these um uh, legs the the struts there uh, and then we can insert them on now here they show you uh, the model going back the right way round and putting some more struts on which plug into the fuselage um, and then some more struts on the top there that's these here which then uh, reach to the wing corners and then we can put the fuselage on but in reality what we're going to do is we're going to put those on and then we've got more rigging to do um, before we can go any further because when you look at the rigging plan which is there you can see there's all sorts of rigging lines uh, going along there so uh, we'll have to have a look um, at what we need to do um, there as I, as I see at the moment there is no um, holes to be drilled out for the rigging so I'm guessing it all connects on the um, the spars so we'll have to take a look. So my next job anyway is to clean up the um, rigging spars, uh, uh, the, the float spars and see how that all goes together. So we're at that point.
So uh, cleaning up of the spars that support the floats now. And actually the construction of these are more is more complex than it looks in the instructions. You've got two lots of spars coming out of the same hole going off at different angles. So you end up with three different sets of spars in each float. Um, so I decided it was best not to do what the instructions have you do here and glue them in, but to wait and just see what it was like when I test fitted it into the wings. Um, because I'm fairly sure it's going to be difficult to get the angles right. You can see them loosely fitted here and um, it took a little bit of, of balancing. It was quite tricky just to get them in. Uh, I'm working on the proboscis here which goes underneath the forward uh, nose end of the aircraft. Um, two parts went together very well and this was the chute that was used to drop the bombs through. Um, there's a little trap door uh, that you might remember from earlier videos and they open the trap door and just drop the bomb through the chute. After the glue was dry it just needed a very light going over with um, a sponge uh, just to make sure everything was nice and smooth um, and that will be painted in the green colour before it's added to the fuselage. Annealing some photo etch now, this is the jacket that goes around the machine gun. The kit gives you two options, a full plastic uh, gun with the, with the jacket moulded in, in plastic, or a photo etch. So you've got to roll the photo etch. Uh, so the only way you're going to do that is to make sure you've annealed it first. So I've just put it in a flame, which is my method. Here you can see the two gun options. Obviously, I want to use the um, photo etch. Uh, it just makes it look that much nicer. You can get aftermarket ones now, but if you can make the kit ones work, why would you do that? So I uh, saved myself a little bit of money, thought I'd have a go. Um, and, and see if we could make it work and actually I was quite happy with it when when it was all done um, quite a bit of seam on some of these parts so there was quite a bit of clean up to do and some of the sprue gates weren't easy to get off because of the position they were in so um, you're seeing this sped up obviously um, but we're going in with an emery board and a little bit of knife work to to get that nicely cleaned up Uh, and then all the way around with a scraper to get the seam off. Um, the gun itself has got lots of detail, so uh, you need to paint it before you add the photo etch, or at least you need to paint the gun barrel. So here we're removing the photo etch um, with my uh, specially adapted number 11 blade. So it has a chisel tip just for removing photo etch. And you can see in the right of your picture there, um, my um, rolling jig, uh, and we're going to roll the uh, photo etch um, on there. There's also um, a second piece of photo etch, which has the end piece for the, the jacket uh, with uh, a little uh, target as well. Quite a delicate little bit of photo etch, actually. So with the photo etch removed, uh, next thing is just to make sure that any nibs left uh, have been removed. Um, so I find the, the little sanding pads that you get from uh, Humbrol, uh, uh, the Airfix website, are really good for this because they're nice and flat and uh, quite hard um, and also not too abrasive. So really good for just finishing off any nubs. Um, then we can place it on here and um, this particular um, jig comes with a number of different sizes of rolling rods and I'm just using one of the smaller ones here and just going backwards and forwards to it forms a perfect curve.
sorry I didn't get this into shot better to be honest um, I, I I periodically check that I'm in shot but um, I mustn't have done in this instance but you can basically see what we're doing starting from the middle rolling to the edge um, applying a little bit of pressure um, that pad isn't hard it's it's soft um, you need a little bit of give so that you get a nice um, form and then periodically um, just check that you're keeping your rod nice and straight uh, and then you're not creating a cone shape with a uh, tighter curl on one end than the other And here I've just changed the rod size so that I can get a nice tight curl towards the end. Uh, and once the two halves have, have met, if you've rolled it properly, they should be perfectly aligned. And if the manufacturer has got it their part correct, that should then be a perfect fit. Now this is wing nut wings, so it will be a perfect fit, and it certainly was. Um, there's different ways of fastening this. Um, if you've got some of the old Tamiya kits, um, like the Dragon Wagon for example, they have you tying it together with wire would you believe. But actually, if you've done the annealing process, once you've rolled this, the photo etch should hold its shape perfectly without any adhesive. Um, but you can, belt and braces, just put a little bit of extra thin CA in, which is what I ended up doing. Um, but it was definitely uh, above what was required. You can see we're nearly there now and probably ready for a test fit. So the jacket just slides over. There's a small lump that it goes over, which is the same width of the inside diameter of the finished part. And you can see that looks so much better than the plastic kit part. Just a last bit of finishing touch just to get it where it needs to be and then right at the end we can just roll the thing over and over again you can see so that the join comes together and it levels itself and you've not got a step between the between it if you do that you can if you roll it so that the whole part rolls over itself a few times you've got a nice level even joint and there you go that is the jacket done barring a little bit of gluing. I, th I can't remember now but I think there might have been a little bit of spring just in the edges uh, which is why I chose to to glue it when it came to the final decision. That's the end piece that needs to go on so there's a little hole in the end piece that fits over the muzzle of the gun so you slide that on and actually it proved to be quite tricky um, to glue it and ended up gluing it on one side and then sort of pushing it down uh, it wasn't quite 100% perfectly flat it was to the eye but when you married it to the part it wasn't so I ended up messing around with it for a little while painting the gun now I'm using ICM uh, gun metal for this um, it's a nice um, relatively dark gun metal colour and then once we give it a wash with a black panel line, probably the Tamiya one, um, that'll give us a, a, a nice dark looking gun and we can perhaps metalise it with a bit of pencil or something like that. Um, but yeah, um, I wanted to paint it before we put the photo etch on, then you're going to have to paint the photo etch, otherwise you're going to see the plastic through it. So it, it has to be painted. I chose to paint all the metal parts at this point. The ICM paints are really, really nice uh, brush paints. Um, as you can see, I'm just thinning them with the smallest dab of water. That's all it's needed. So with the gun all painted up, 
we can now um, add the photo etch and glue it in place so that you can see the two upturned um, bottle lids there the red and the white one um, I use the white one the inside of the white one for extra thin CA um, it keeps it collected just inside the rim there uh, and then we can apply it with my usual glue applicator which is a bit of brass wire in a small um, drill So I glued it at the base first and then we had to put this uh, front piece on and it looks the part when it's all built up but like I said before it was a little bit tricky. I had it in my head that once you'd threaded the barrel through it, it would just drop into place and then you could plop a bit of glue on, but um, it, that was not to be. So the first thing you've got to do is make sure the sight is perfectly aligned down the length of the gun. Um, which for a fleeting moment I'd forgotten about and then it occurred to me in the nick of time. And then we're gluing it on. The great thing about videos is you can edit them so you don't see how long this actually took because I had to re-glue it about three times. I am happy with how the uh, gun has turned out using the photo etch from the kit. Um, I think that looks really good. So we've just got to paint the um, wooden, uh, the stock and the, the little handle there. Um, and then that's uh, looking good. I'm going to give the, um, the gun a little bit of a wash um, with um, some, th probably some Tamiya black panel liner, I think. Um, and then we can just go over it with uh, a pencil and, and bring out some uh, metalised uh, raised detail and that should look pretty cool I think. So painting the floats, the same sort of process as I've used before. Um, we started off with uh, a white one shot primer um, which is a, always a nice base for wood I, I personally find. Uh, and then we went in with khaki brown as our uh, colour base. So airbrushed on, um, didn't take long to do. Um, the, there was no real filling or anything I had to do before we got to that stage. Then we've got to think about how we put the wood, uh, wood stains on. And originally I thought about doing it as panels because they're quite large parts. And then I thought, you know, um, actually... By the time we paint paint it up with the, the metal bit elements on it and what have you, and you've got the the steps in place and the the uh, struts in place, I should say, you're not really going to notice it. So um, we went straight in with the oil brusher. Um, so here you can see me using the dark brown, but actually we ended up putting two colours on. Um, so the other colour that I used was earth, which is a slightly lighter dark brown um, and I even put one or two little um, drops of the red brown oil streaker on um, so you've seen me do this process uh, several times now in this build so we won't labor on it too much but um, you can see we had to do it on all four sides um, the underneath included uh, and although you're not going to see the underneath because the, the model will be sat on it decided to do a thorough job and we went all the way around it um, so it takes a little bit of time because you've got to get it all laid down evenly and then you've got to start manipulating it um, but it's worth the time and effort and I basically broke it into three sections you can see the little treads on there um, naturally breaks the part up into three sections but um, here you could see it was a bit thin in places and 
uh, we wanted to make sure that it looked the part so we were just making sure everything was covered off really so you can take your time with this the, the beauty of the oil brushes is um, that oil paints so your drying time is hours unless of course you seal it which ultimately we did once we were happy with it Doing this process of putting some uh, additional on extra gives you the opportunity to start building up some apparent layers and um, some darker streaks where you might want, for example, some knots to be or some uh, different imperfections in the wood. I imagine this was some form of marine, hardwood marine ply that was used rather than just hardwood. Um, you'd think they'd have done that for strength, but not sure. Uh, so you can see me just evening it out there. Then as you can see we went, followed the same process in the centre section. It got a bit trickier, I have to be honest, when we'd sort of got two sides done because holding the part it's a big part holding the part while you're putting this down was difficult and I thought at one stage I might have to seal it and um, uh, and, and finish it and then come back and do uh, the other the, the underneath or something but actually um, the, the airbrusher oil paint I don't know what the formulation is but it's not just straight oil paint um, and it sort of goes for sort of forms a skin and it becomes uh, not quite dry to the touch, but enough for you to be able to carefully handle it. Um, so that's what we did. Uh, and I was able to do all four sides um, in one session. What you do is do one side, uh, then do the same side on the other float, then come back to the first float and do another side, and then leave that. And eventually, when you got when I came to do the underside, the top side that we'd done first was dry enough for me to rest it that way around. Um, on reflection, probably should have started on the bottom face first because that's got some runners on that. Although the instructions say leave wood, I don't believe for a minute would have been wood. They would have they would have pinned some form of metal runner on it, even if it was just a bit of aluminium. So I'm going to paint them in aluminium. Um, but yeah, uh, we processed, the process went uh, really quite well. You can see me putting a few uh, sh uh, shakes and weaves into the wood there. Um, it can be a bit tricky not to oversize it. I think I might have done a little bit, but it all looks good in the end. So you can see me here adding the red brown from the streaking brusher um, and I was relatively liberal when we sort of blend it all in. Don't be afraid to put it on, if you put too much on you can, you can blend it in and then wipe it off with a separate sponge, a clean sponge. But if you don't put enough on, um, when you come to put some more on, uh, it just makes the job a little bit harder because what you've got to do is even out the paint again. So that can it can take a bit of time to do that. So I find putting more on is better. You don't want to you don't want to absolutely smother it because then you you're losing any uh, color variation that you're putting in by doing that. But you can see how the previous oil. Um, layer streaks and moves a little bit so you've got to be mindful of that uh, and you don't want to leave it any time for a great length of time before you put the next lot on so to finish the process I mixed crystal orange crystal red and give it a spray and that sealed it all in and gives it a nice sort of satin finish so we're ready to move on Okay, floats are done in terms of um, the, the wood grain effect. Next step, um, as you've seen before, 
um, is that we're going to put some um, uh, tint on it. So I'm going to do what we did with the fuselage and mix uh, the red and the yellow to give us this sort of uh, red amber glow to it all. Um, and then we've got a little bit of uh, detail painting, I think. Um, I want to paint the uh, runs underneath um, in, in silver. Um, I think that will look nice. And um, I believe these, there's some little discs here. I think they should be aluminium. Um, so we need to just check our references. But... Um, See, they don't show anything on the instrument. They show the, the little discs being painted, but they don't show anything underneath. And I can't believe for a minute that um, the underneath of these were left as wood. It, it, there's some form of protection on there to make those skids work. So uh, I'm, go I'm going to put some aluminium on there. I think that seems reasonable to me. Um, paint the eye in. Um, and I'm just wondering whether these on top here um, are some form of walkway and and so it was some form of tread or something like that. I think that's also reasonable. So I may well paint those in in a different colour as well. Um, uh, it'll just, just bring out the detail a little bit as well, picking some of them out in different colours. So, yeah, next stage is to just um, airbrush them uh, with a filter. That... that We'll seal all the oil, gives them a nice satin finish, uh, and then we're ready for uh, whatever I decide I'm going to do next. Mm -hmm.